because otherwise, where do we go? Where, you know, what do we do? Okay. Assume that um, tomorrow you have a chance to talk to a group of 16 year olds Mm -hmm. and they say, oh, we're, we're going to class. We only have one minute between classes. Please tell us everything we need to know for the rest of our lives to protect ourselves from wireless radiation, but you only have one minute. What would you say to them are the most important things that they have to know in a minute? To protect yourself? To protect themselves. Yeah. Get, keep the cell phone away from your head. Don't put it against your body in your in your pants or in your bra and use airplane mode more. You know, turn the phone off sometimes and enjoy time with your friends. Keep the phone at a distance. Uh, use use your computers with an ethernet cord. I mean, there's really a lot more possibilities to do that than you think. I know I'm going over my hour, but, um, I hour, mean, 50, hour and 15 minutes. Go <laughs> no, ahead. I meant my minute. I meant my minute. That's oh. a hard one. So I would just say, you know, keep the phone away from your body, keep wireless devices away from your body, keep a distance and, uh, you know, educate you more about this, ask questions. I mean, we need our youth to start asking questions. And ensuring safety before they start rolling all of these quote unquote smart devices out. If they damage the brain, how smart are these devices? It's not smart. How do we make our wireless phone connected to the internet so that it's not wireless anymore? Oh, like our cell phone? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have, this is an ethernet cord that you connect to the router. Um, which I have a modem that's, uh, it, I don't know if it's called a router, but it, it does not have, uh, the wireless is off. It actually doesn't have wireless capability. You could get one that has wireless, but that you can press a button to turn it off. You need to get your own. So I have the ethernet, then I plug it in to here, and then I plug it into um, the phone, actually. Every phone's different, so you have to do a little bit of research. We have it on our Healthy Tech Project at Home site, some how-tos. Uh, that I could show you, but then you can do WhatsApp. You can do everything you do on Wi-Fi, but with the radio, the data goes through the cord, not through the air. Basically, technology was rolled out, and companies like wireless because it's not as regulated. It's really largely unregulated in many ways related to the health issues. But we want the information to go through the cord, not through the air. When it's in the air it is absorbed into our bodies and into the bodies of our pets and wildlife, pollinators, birds, bees, and trees. Another whole issue, uh, which is critically important that we are working on now as well. I mean, with all of these 5G towers going up in New York City or in neighborhoods, what about the trees and the bees? There is a substantial body of research indicating effects on pollinators and on wildlife. Uh, There was a major review that was just published of over 1,200 studies indicating uh, serious effects at very, very low levels to wildlife. Marilyn, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Marilyn? David, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Hi, it's David and I'm from the Washington DC area. Hi, Theodora. Hi, wonderful to see you again or hear you. Anyway, uh, I was just wondering, Theodora, given all the recent studies, animal studies like bee studies and on effects on trees and the canopy and all that, has the Environmental Health Trust reached out to environmental organizations like NRDC or Sierra Club or others to help them in this battle rather than taking it on yourself. And um, can you briefly indicate or talk about what's going on overseas and their battles, uh, good good and bad as far as their victories and awareness? Uh, Sure. So um, yes, and actually we're doing more of that, reaching out to organizations. We've certainly reached out to the Sierra Club. Um, NRDC, actually, they filed an amicus brief in our case in our lawsuit against the FCC where they talk about this issue uh, and the lack of protections for wildlife. So we're gonna be doing a lot more in the upcoming year as well. We're actually developing a website just dedicated to wildlife impacts. In other countries, um, I will tell you that 
the European Union is funding research looking at impacts to wildlife. Uh, not the US government, but in Europe, there are some studies moving forward looking at this issue because with 5G, the frequencies, some of the frequencies that will be used in 5G are those higher submillimeter and millimeter frequencies that uniquely impact the uh, bodies of small animals or insects, bees, and there's been research on that already. So uh, they are looking at that more robustly. Sylvia, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Yes, I'm from Arizona and I was, I'm listening to this <clears throat> um, video in my car um, and I have my phone on a uh, holder type thing and that hooks on to the fan and I'm running my air conditioning. So what kind of effect does that have on me? Well, what I would say is if you're in a situation where like the first, the first step to reduce exposure would be to turn the video off so it's just the sound. So when you have video and sound, it's more than just uh, just one of them. And then, and thankfully, I'm so glad that this is recorded. You know, obviously, if when it's when there are podcasts or other things, have those have that media pre-downloaded. Like moving forward, you have your pre-downloaded uh, files so that you can listen to podcasts in the car or listen to pre-downloaded music. Um, on your playlists without it having necessarily streaming. So, you know, what does it mean? Well, there haven't been studies specifically looking at the current way that we use technology in this modern era, which is why we're recommending reducing your overall exposure and also calling companies to be more accountable because we believe that this can all be done. There's much safer ways that technology can be run than the way that we're doing it now. Marilyn, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Want to get, nope. Can't get it, okay. Um, Ma Marley, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? Hi, this is Marley, I'm from Hollywood, Florida. I was just curious, Theodora, thank you for your presentation. Um, very, very informative. Um, I was wondering about the cages that they have for the Wi-Fi for the homes. Do those actually protect you? And if you do use it, does the Wi-Fi, do, do we get reception or is it just to use it overnight? You mean the cages for the Wi-Fi router? Yeah, for the routers. They have like these casings, like a box or something. You know, I, I don't know. We did, we haven't tested or addressed the shielding things again because of all the, um, because there's just so many different products out there. Uh, so um, I think it is useful to, you know, I've been in situations where I'm, of course, around Wi-Fi or I'm in a house where there's Wi-Fi, but I have some ability to do some shielding. Um, but I would say if you can turn it off at night, that that's really the best first step on this issue. So okay. I don't I can't speak to products. I wish I I wish that we were, but that's a larger that that would require a lot. We really want the companies to be doing that research and having a standardized way because companies often will do research, but there needs to be a standardized way that you can compare products from different companies and actually also ensure that it's really doing what they, there's some oversight. There needs to be some oversight too. There are some really good companies out there, but I can't speak to any particular one. Alice, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Yes, I have a question. I, I came in late, so I'm sorry if you've already covered this, but you know the, uh, is it earbuds or whatever those, those white things are that stick out of your ears? Is there a safe uh, brand or safe thing to use so that I can listen to my phone as I walk around? I would use um, air tube uh, with wired, a wired uh, piece that had, it's called air tube earphones. Is not, that T-U-B-E? -E? Is that T-U-B-E? Yeah, like tube. Mm -hmm. 
air tube wired. Yeah. Like air tube um, headset for a cell phone. You could just search that. We have some Thank on you. our website. If you go on, to, on, on our website, we have a section on products actually, and we have links to products. Can you tell me that website, please? ehtrust.org. E A E H T R U S T E H trust.org. I could put it in the chat actually. Thank you. Yeah. Evelyn, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. So my question is about the uh, electric company putting a smart meter on my home. So um, the electric company is trying to tell me that they're only going to turn on the Wi-Fi momentarily to take the reading of my electric usage. But I think that must be some kind of PR deceptive spin because your website says that all smart devices emit low level frequencies 24 seven, including radio frequencies and magnetic frequencies and harmonic frequencies. So isn't that smart meter going to be kind of like a cell phone that's always on that I can't turn off at night, like a wiring, like a router, because it's actually connected to the wiring in my home? Okay, so th thank you for bringing up the issue of smart meters. Um, every smart meter, there are different kinds of models. So I don't, are they saying it's the kind that wakes up when the truck goes by? Um, most or many smart meters work on a mesh network. And if you can have an analog or keep the one that you have, that's what we recommend. I'm going to put, I have a page that's all on um, smart meters, and I'm going to put a link to that in the chat because there are some smart meters that are sort of like bubble up, but Honestly, it depends on that the models are all different. So I don't want to speak too much more on it than I would say get the technical specs from your from the company and also connect with a local smart meter group in your state or community. Every state in the US has smart meter groups that are working on this or safe tech groups or 5G groups. And the people in those groups know like what's going on in the local community and with the smart meters. So um, let me put that in the chat. <clears throat> Linda, would you like to ask a question? And where are you from? Hi, I'm from New York. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I've been seeing a lot of these pyramids now that have crystals in them and maybe some copper wire. Do those help to counteract the, the effects of the EMFs? You know, I, again, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, we, this isn't what we do research in. So um, I can't speak, speak to these, yeah. to these and products. And also uh, the Shanghai, the Shanghai uh, pyramids as well. I just, I don't, I can't answer that. that okay. That's not my, certainly not my area. And our organization hasn't worked on that. So. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, uh, Ainsley, last question. Uh, where are you from? All right, Ainsley Amarali from Trinidad and Tobago. Theodora, since it's the last question and you're talking about frequencies, what about the positive frequencies that we normally see on YouTube? Like this healing frequency at 528 hertz heals the body and 700 hertz heals the body. What is your thoughts on healing frequencies from YouTube in particular? Thanks. Yeah, I, I don't know about uh, YouTube, but I know there are healing frequencies and there are there's a lot of research being done in the medical field to use uh, electromagnetic fields and non ionizing electromagnetic fields to heal or to even help deliver drugs from uh, to different parts of your body that might have membranes that don't don't allow the drugs through. But our bodies. All, all cells in our in our body have frequencies and we emit frequencies. So it would make sense that um, frequencies are used in that way. But I don't know exactly what you're referring to in terms of the, the YouTube, but um, if it can heal, it can harm. And if it can heal, it's very powerful. So we should use it thoughtfully. So I think that for all of these frequencies, when they're artificial, we need to be careful and just make sure that it's a 
not going to harm us. And the thing that's different between healing frequencies and wireless communication frequencies is wireless communication is data on the frequency. So there's, it's not just a carrier wave. It's the information, like the video, like if the, the video that we're doing right now, for example, if it was wireless is uh, packaged and carried and it's erratically um, it's pulsed and modulated and that's very different than the healing frequencies that are being developed actually, but they are, there, there are frequencies, but a wireless communication signal is quite more complex actually. So, but this is an area, I think there's a lot of, a lot being done in that area right now. Theodora, how do we follow up with you, stay in touch with you, go to your website? What's the best way for people that want more information and more communication with you? What's the best thing they can do? Oh, great. Yes, we have a newsletter. I'm going to put the link in. I hope everyone signs up for our newsletter at ehtrust.org. Um, when you sign up, we will send information quite regularly on what's going on. We also have uh, action steps to take if you want to meet with your elected officials. I also have another our other website, which is Healthy Tech Home Project. I want to put a link to that in there as well. Um, okay. So I am putting our Healthy Tech Project for if you want to make changes in your home uh, and take it step by step. We have how-to guides. We have like the California Department of public health. We have the Maryland uh, Children's Environmental Health Council Advisory Council recommendations, the Santa Clara uh, Medical Association recommendations, and you can sign up for that. And then let me just put a link to the how-tos, which is healthytechhome.org slash resources. That will be, I think, answer a lot of your questions, like how to set up a nursery. Oh, one of the one of the quick things to do is to start at night. Like at night, turn off your phone, uh, turn off the wireless networks that you can, and get out of your bedroom the screens. There don't need to be, you know, computers and and also gaming devices. All of those things actually like wireless gaming consoles, they emit all the time, even when you're not using them. Uh, so get them out of the bedroom or get ones where you can turn them on airplane mode or you can put them on a power strip and turn them off when you're not using them. Those are just some simple tricks to reduce your hours of exposure. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> Any other I, questions? Hope, I hope everyone will um, try to find a way to donate to, to EH. E what's the website called? ehtrust.org. Oh, ehtrust.org. And I hope people will make a, a monthly donation so that they can do this work. If you're thinking that, eh, I don't need to support Theodora and EH Trust and Deborah Davis, someone else will do it. Um, I've been following this issue. I don't really see anyone else doing it. We are very um, vulnerable and there's not that many people fighting for us. Very, very, very few people fighting hard. These people are smart. They know what to do. They know the legal system. The only thing separating them from great things is they need the money to fight. A, uh, they need a tiny fraction of the money that's going against them because they're much, they're very smart about it, but they need some funding. So if there's any way to support them, I hope everyone will. Um, I want to unmute everyone so we could all thank you. This was really great, Theodora. We appreciate it so much. Thank you for everything. Bye, that you Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank you.